Hey, it's Ted here, and I'm working on my Saturn, an 09 Saturn. It's got a charging issue, and I think what it is is uh, the battery's gone south. So what I wanted to do was do a series of tests and show you how to test the battery. Um, this is something my students do in the lab, and they don't do it often enough, so I'm going to make this video so they can watch it several times and uh, try to remember this process of testing batteries for different conditions. So let's get started. Okay, so as we get started here, this battery, when I install batteries in vehicles or in equipment, I try to remember to put the date of installation on a, uh, this is just some blue tape, and I've written here, and the date of installation is 31517. It is now November of 23. So this battery is six and a half years old. It obviously has met its match and it's done its job. So first thing I did was I started the car up the other day, the battery indicator light came on. I measured the battery voltage while the engine was running and it was about 13 and a half volts. It should be around 14 volts. I started it up today and it's reading 15.15 volts and the charge indicator light isn't on. So what I did was I started it up, I ran it for about five minutes to charge it back up. So what I'm going to look at here is I'm going to look at the state of charge just with my multimeter across the two leads. And right now, it's been dropping since I shut the car off. I've got the car door on just to have a little, little draw on it just to see what it would do because I wanted to draw the surface charge off. I'll close the door, shut the interior lights off, and I'm still, the battery voltage is dropping. It's already dropped from 13 volts. It's down to 12.28 volts. So since I had it running for a while, what I want to do is I'm going to do a load test on it first. So what I want to do is apply a load to this battery. So get my meter leads out of the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a load tester and we're going to apply a load to the battery. All right, so I've got a, I've got a load tester here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a load to it. And what I want to do is I want to know what the CCA of the battery is. So on this battery, the CCA of this battery is 650 CCA. That's cold cranking amp. So what I want to do is I want to apply half of that to the load tester. So the load tester is going to be applied 650 divided by 2 is 325 amps. So what I'm going to do is apply about 300 amps to this for about 15 seconds. And I want to see what the voltage drops to. If the voltage drops below 10, it gets into that red zone and it starts to drop off quickly, then I know that this battery definitely needs to be replaced. So, red lead on first, black lead on last. Okay, keep it away from the computer. Right now it's reading 12 volts. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna apply 300 amps to it, and let's see what happens here. So there's 200, there's about 300 amps. It's about 10 dropping off. It'll beep after 15 seconds. Down at 10. Still dropping. Still dropping. 9.8. It's borderline right there. 9.6 is the lowest. So this battery definitely fails a load test. It's been charged for a while, so it fails that. Let's do one other test. So what we've done is the surface charge. And we know the surface charge of that battery was dropping very, very rapidly after being run for 10 minutes and it was at 15 volts. So the alternator was putting lots of energy into the battery, should have charged it up. I had it running yesterday. So let's go and do the next test, and that's gonna be, I'm gonna put my charger on it and do a high charge on it. So let me get the load tester just connected and I'll get this set up. All right, you're gonna hook up a battery charger. The rule is that we always have the battery charger just connected. We're gonna hook the red lead up first to the battery, okay? And then we're going to hook the negative lead up to the battery. Again, staying away from any computers. You don't want any arc or anything like that. I'm going to then plug my battery charger in. So, battery charger is plugged in. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to put it on high charge. This will put approximately 30 amps into the battery at a high charge. This is a 30 output out uh, high charger. It's a 150 amp boost and it's a two amp, two amp low charge for long charging. And what I'm gonna do at this point, after I start the chargers, I need to start a timer. 
Okay, so I'm gonna leave this on high charge for three minutes. At the end of three minutes, I'm gonna hook my multimeter up and I wanna see what the charge status is while it's still under high charge. What's gonna happen is the battery charger is gonna keep increasing the voltage output, trying to get through to the lead plates and recharge the battery to fill it back up with electrons. If the lead plates are sulfated, then that coating that's on the lead plates, you can't break that coating because it's been on there and it's permanent pretty much at this point. Now, the other option is the starting and discharging and starting and discharging over six, six and a half years, the lead has slowly, the plates have slowly gotten thinner and thinner and thinner to the point where now the battery doesn't have the surface capacity anymore to maintain that charge. So we're gonna wait the three minutes. At the end of three minutes, I'll put the meter on there. We'll see what we get. Okay, we're coming up on three minutes now, so let's go ahead and see what we're gonna get. So again, the charger is still on. And what I wanna do is I wanna hook my meter up and I wanna see what we come up with. Yeah, 15.6, something like that. Let's check the timer, see where we are in time. Yeah, 15.6.7. Yeah, we're at three minutes now, so it's still charging on high charge, and I'm only reading about 15.68. So the, the demise of this battery is that it fails the load test. What I want to do is I want to charge it up again. I'm going to leave it on a charger for a little while longer to get a charge into it. And then what I'll do is I'll put it on a low charge overnight, and I'll let it recharge deeply overnight and then I'll load test it again in the morning to see if it is. But being the date, it's 2017, and it got a lot of times you have no idea what the actual date of installation is on a battery. You know, they have some numbers on here. Sometimes they scratch them off. A lot of times they don't. That's why I always recommend that you put a date on the battery. The other thing to keep the battery clean, that's another thing that I always try to do, is every time I do an oil change, I take some soapy water, and I clean off the top of the battery, I spray it down and I clean it off. Examine the terminals, make sure they're not dirty, get a little shot of T9 Bow Shield just to keep those connections clean and keep the resistance down. I did have a problem with a negative contact and what we ended up doing was that we ended up changing that terminal and I'll show you that in a second. So let me see where we're at in time. Yeah, we're at four and a half minutes now in high charge. So we're still only at 15.74. So that's well within range of what I wanna see. 15.5 is the highest. Now, if the voltage went way up to 16, 17 volts, then that battery is sulfated. The way batteries get sulfated is you leave them in a discharge state. So if you have a battery that's sitting in a boat all winter long, and there's electronic device in that boat that's drawing electricity, like a computer on an engine, <clears throat> or you have a clock, that's in a stereo and that stays on all winter, that's a parasitic draw. That's gonna pull that battery down over the winter. And what's gonna happen is once that battery gets to a set point, then the sulfur in the sulfuric acid solution, the battery will then adhere to the lead plates. And that's called sulfation. And what happens is you get that bond of the sulfur to the lead plates. Now you can't get that bond off. You can't separate it because now it's a new compound. Normally in, in discharge and recharge zones of batteries, it will adhere for a little while, but it's spongy as we say. When you recharge the battery, you break that bond, the sulfur comes back into solution, and you recharge the battery. So we're still at 15.79, and I'm gonna put this on low charge right now, all right? And let's see what happens. Ultimately, it's crashing, it's down to 3.6536. And still crashing I'm gonna shut it off so I have an off button here the battery charger is off if you don't have an off button unplug the battery charger that's how you disconnect it so once I've unplugged the battery charger negative terminal comes off first positive terminal comes off last Let's see what's happening with this, uh, the discharge speed of this battery. So it's, it's dropping pretty rapidly. While we're waiting 
for this to just charge a little bit further. I'm going to show you what I ended up having to do here on this battery terminal. This happened a while ago. All right, I've zoomed in here a little bit and you can see the actual terminals now. So this is the original terminal, still nice and tight. It has this interesting cantilever device that when you tighten this nut, it pulls this end in and pulls the clamp down on the battery terminal. What happened here was that band clamp that clamps onto it had finally worn out and the battery terminal was loose. So what I did was, being a marine guy, I ended up getting a set of terminals that clamp on, lead terminals on here that has a stud, and I just hacksawed off the end of the terminal, drilled a hole in the cable, and then attached that to the post. Make sure that you clean the terminal up, clean the, the brand new connection, snug it up good, a little bow shield again, or WD-40, whatever you got, just a little to keep it clean. And that really just helped keep the connections tight so I don't have a problem anymore with a loose connection and low battery voltage. All right, so it's been several minutes. This battery's been sitting. And let's see what we got for a surface voltage now. Twelve six six, pretty good. So twelve six is a fully charged battery. So this battery still holding a charge somewhat, but it fails that load test. So I could charge it up overnight and probably it would be okay for a while. But the problem that I was having was, you know, the battery indicator light in the vehicle is gone crazy. And at one day that says it's low voltage, I check it at 13.8. Today I check it again and it's 15 and a half. So my assumption is the condition of the battery has something to do with the alternator internal electrical trying to recharge the battery and then maybe the alternator has an issue, issue internally with the regulator but what I want to see is I want to see what the voltage is when I start it up okay and the next thing I wanted to do was while I'm here and we're you know we're going to be looking at the meter as I'm going to show you how to do a voltage drop test across the alternator so what I'm going to do is I want to put this on here again and what I want to see is I want to see what the voltage potential is when I start it up. So here is the, the voltage potential at rest, 12.65. And then we're going to start it up and see what happens. Now this also is a quick load test to find out how far this battery voltage drops while it's cranking. So 14.6, that definitely is charging that battery at a high rate of 14.6 volts. Now we're going to go Headlights on. I'm going to shut the headlights off. And let's see what okay, headlights are on. 14.915. That's a little bit high for the charging of this battery, so my assumption is there's something going on in the regulator. 
Now, because of the status of the battery and the way that it doesn't accept that load, it could also be that there's a problem with the battery and the alternators trying to figure out what to do in the charge rate. So 15 volts is a little high right now, but with the headlights on, it's down around 14.6. So the next thing I wanted to do was go over how to do a voltage drop test on the battery to the alternator. So there's on the back side of the alternator, there's an output post, and that output post connects to the battery here. So this is going to be a lead that comes from the alternator in the harness and ultimately leads to the battery connection here. What I can do is I can actually look and see what the actual voltage drop in this cable is by going to this cable terminal here as close as I can get to it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach down and I'm gonna put the other lead from my meter onto the output post of the alternator. So positive to positive is the voltage drop test. And let's see how many volts we lose in this test. Okay. Now I'll put this on the negative post and see what we get. So it's still 14, 15.27 and then positive to positive. What's my voltage drop? Uh, 0.12. You're allowed 0.1 volts for any conductor, so that's okay. So there's no voltage drop in the positive side, but let's check the negative side going at it too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the frame of the alternator. The output of the back side of the frame of the alternator is the ground path. So again, I'm going to switch my leads. I'm going to go to negative, close to my battery, and then I'm going to go to one of the mounting bolts from the alternator, which is a ground. Right, so there's virtually no voltage drop from the ground 0.02, 0 0.026. We're again allowed 0.1 volts. So again, there's no voltage drop on that side of the circuit. So we go back here, and then that's 15 and a half volts at this point. That's not totally excessive, but it's well above where you want it to be for the battery. So the battery itself could be that it's in such a state that it's demanding more current from the alternator to try to recharge it, and that's why it's reading this. And notice that it's fluctuating, it's not consistent. It's 15.3, it's 15.8. So the regulator is doing some adjustment here, trying to charge that battery. So this car's got that 83,000 miles on it, and it's from 2009 to 2023, so you get the idea how old the car is. So it may be time, obviously, for the battery, but that alternator, once we put a new battery in it, I'm going to do this test again, and I want to see if it stabilizes. Now, your voltage should be between 14.2 14 to 14.6 in the highest range. 15 volts right here is too high for the voltage. So the alternator may have raised the voltage up because it's trying to recharge a poor battery. So once I put a new battery in, we'll do the test again and see what happens. Okay, so winter is approaching here. It's cool out tonight, probably around 40 degrees, getting dark. So I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something about charging systems and how to test batteries. If you liked the video, please subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next one.